Hello, and welcome to our sixth episode of Behind the Number, brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. And today, we are actually inside of Academy Sports and Outdoors. We are so excited for today's episode. We are going to be discussing performance consistencies and some of the pressures that come with that. And we thought it was only right to bring on Nathan Detmer, star baseball player who goes through a lot of those performance consistencies, considering they have multiple games a week. So, Nathan, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Yes, how are of course. Doing? We're doing, doing great. Good. Thank you. I just got to say, y'all are looking great. What you, I <laughs> love y'all's tops. Nathan. What are you wearing? Thank you. Um, so, Academy actually gave us the opportunity to go shopping through their store yeah. and get some apparel for today's episode. Um, the Freely brand is actually what we're wearing, so... Maybe they have a men's line coming up that you can hey, wear I need to get in another episode or something like love that. It, love it. So thank you for the compliment. Of course. <laughs> Appreciate it. So um, Nathan is our starting right hand pitcher for the Texas A and M baseball team. He's our Friday night guy. Has been doing a really good job this season. Has had a great career. He um, last season, last spring, was a two time SEC pitcher of the week. Correct. Yes, ma'am. Round of applause. Ooh. Congrats to you. Thank you. So now we're just going to dive right into the subject and just get this conversation going. So just off the bat, what would you say is the hardest part of your job as starting pitcher? Hmm. That, that's a good question. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like all of it. But uh, I'd say the hardest part is, is staying uh, committed to a process each week without being emotionally attached to the results. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Because – as you're saying, in a sport like baseball where you're playing four times a week, uh, sometimes you're going to fail. And uh, it's, it's really tough, but sticking to that process, uh, no matter what the results are, I would say that's the hardest part. Yeah, yeah and I, I would say, too, that's a lot easier said than done because for us, it's only two games a week typically, mm -hmm. and it's on a Thursday or Friday night, and then we have a Sunday game. And so it's a really quick turnaround, at least for us, but it's nothing compared to playing four games four. a week. And so – where do you kind of take the time to maybe hit that reset or what do you do that allows you to go into the next game, say the result wasn't so great or you had a great result and you're like, you know what, we have to put that behind. How do you do that? Mm -hmm. we're, we're super big on mental performance. We actually have a mental performance coach uh, awesome. work, working with us oh. and, uh, and Brian Kane. I don't know if anyone knows who that is, but uh, I love that guy. And so he's huge on showering well. And what he means by that is like no matter what the results are in a game, whether good or bad, when you take a shower after the game, it's done. It's gone. It's behind you. I like that. And, I like and you that too. You take the positive from it and you just move on because it's in the past and all you can control is right now in the present. Yeah. Oh, and that's awesome. Yeah, I know. I really like that. I, I like that. Do you feel like that's something that works for you? Because I know, like, for myself at least, there was a while where it was so much easier said than done. Mm -hmm. Like, I would, there would be a bad result or a really good result. And I'd be like, okay, I'm not going to dwell on it. I'm going to let it go. But mm -hmm. then it's so much easier said than done. Mm -hmm. like anyone yeah. can say it. But it how is. do you actually, like, put that into practice? And is that something that works for you? Like, do you go mm -hmm. home, you take a shower, you relax, then you're like, okay, mm -hmm. it's over. Yeah. It, it is definitely easier said than yeah. done. You know, <laughs> I'm human. I want to think about everything that I did wrong in the, yeah. the outing before. But uh, I, I do think it, it definitely helps kind of that reset. You feel clean. You feel nice. Right after, uh, especially if it was a bad game. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I, I'd, I'd say it works for me. Yeah. yeah, especially with how much you guys play. Like Ali mm -hmm. said, four games a week, that's oh, yeah. a lot that's a of lot. just stress on your body, on your mind, like you said. So that is hard to kind of manage that, I guess. So that's I like that saying, showering and letting I've never release. heard that before. Yeah. Love it. And awesome. I like that you guys have a mental coach. Not mm -hmm. many sports have that. Yeah. It's so huge. What it's are huge. really cool. With that being said, what are some other, like, what – are some key takeaways that you feel like you have applied in your not only games but in training because I feel like that is a big part of dealing with pressure is oh, that yeah. you put in so much training you put in so much practice and mm -hmm. focus before the game so that when you get to the games you can perform that way that you want to the biggest thing that I've learned and in put into practice is definitely controlling what I can control mm -hmm. and we we do this exercise each year uh before the season starts and it's you just take a list and, and kind of make a, a column that of your controllables and a column of your uncontrollables, and you fill out as many as you can in controllable and as many as you can in uncontrollable, and soon you realize there's only about two or three things you can control yes. as a baseball player, and there's a million things that you can't control. So why would you give any attention mm -hmm. to your uncontrollables when this is all you can control? So just focusing on that, you know, as a pitcher, like just focusing on executing a pitch and then 
I can't control anything. I can't control if the batter swings. I can't yeah, control the right. fans yelling. I can't control if the umpire calls it a ball or a strike. So right. just focusing on on executing and what I can control, I would say that's a big yeah. thing I put into practice. I love that because that's something that I even – like mm -hmm. people in my circle, I would tell them that or even something that I can apply to my personal life oh, and yeah. work, school, whatever it Definitely. is, to just focus yes. on the controllables. Because like, you, cause like yeah. you said, it is so easy to mm -hmm. be focused on everything outside yep. of that. So yes. that's true. That's easy. So um, I know. Have you heard the saying? You've heard the saying practice makes perfect. Yep. And perfect practice makes perfect and perfect your craft. Yeah. What how do you feel about the kind of contradictions in that of being perfect when it, it's kind of hard for people to be perfect especially in their sport sure. yeah I've I've struggled with that a lot and I, I've tried to be perfect in my career um, especially as a younger freshman I remember there's there's kind of three types of pitchers in the world there's a, a primal pitcher who goes to effort a prayer pitcher who just hopes that he throws a strike and uh, a perfect pitcher who just tries to nibble and be mm -hmm. perfect and uh, I would consider myself when I was younger a perfect pitcher so I would try and be perfect and throw it right on the outside <laughs> corner. And, you know, when you're trying to nibble like that, you're not going to have the results yeah. that you want. So uh, definitely just getting through that, like gaining confidence by realizing that you don't have to be perfect and, and yeah. good is good enough. Mm -hmm. And it, it, with our stuff, if you just throw strikes and fill up the zone, it doesn't matter where it is, you're going to have some success. Yeah. So you don't have to be perfect. Yes, yeah. I heard there was things that I heard growing up because I feel like perfectionism is such an – unrealistic expectation mm -hmm. and it's something that we all put on ourselves. we're mm -hmm. like okay as an athlete you have to go out you have to perform you have to be perfect or people are going to look at you and perceive you differently or the fans are going to get upset or your coaches are going to get mad and it's just such an unrealistic expectation to set on yourself and something that I heard when I was younger is practice makes permanent and that stuck with me for a oh, really okay. long time mm -hmm. yeah because I'm like you're right practice doesn't make perfect mm -hmm. you're yeah. never going to reach perfection but yeah. If you're practicing, you're going to reach something mm -hmm. that's permanent. And I feel like For that sure. goes within the consistency aspect. Yeah. And it's something that I'm sure it's hard that you go out and you're playing four games a week and you're trying to maintain that consist English <laughs> consistency. <laughs> um, so kind of run us through, have there been instances in your career when some of those external pressures have been put on you a little bit more and you have kind of faced some of those moments where you're like, okay, I'm feeling all of these things right now. Let me try to either let it go or have they affected you um, differently. So maybe just some instances where that's happened in your career. So as I was saying, like working with that mental performance coach, he helped us go through a routine when you're actually out playing mm -hmm. and uh, on the mound as, as pitchers. And so it's called like green, yellow, and red lights. So in, when you're in green, you're rolling, you're doing really good. If, you, if something does happen uh, – uh, say like they hit a home run or they get a double or whatever it is something bad happens and you're starting to spiral out of control you kind of feel it uh there's a routine you can go through that can keep you consistent keep you uh get you back into that green light and so for me it's just stepping back kind of grabbing the rosin grabbing some dirt and throwing it away and just okay, realizing like, like kind of mentally Very like cool. i'm throwing that pitch away yeah and it's, yeah. In, and it's in the past i'm moving on to the next one Right. Yeah, so I love it as career coach. Yeah. I'm like, can I, I have his number? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah hold it. on. Give us and his card. Yeah, yeah, so that really helps me uh, get in the green lights, and I, I've definitely used that That's in games so before. That's so great. That and, is uh, awesome. Just get me back on track so yes. I don't spiral out of control. I yeah. really love that. Me too. There was a moment when I went to a – I was going and seeing a sports coach as well, and he had told me one time, he's like, okay, a moment has no definition of time. Like a moment can mm -hmm. be any length of time. It can be three yeah. seconds. It can be five minutes. So if there's ever an instance where you, you're not, you feel like you made a mistake or you feel like you failed, the moment doesn't have to be over yeah. with. Like you can make more of that moment. Mm -hmm. And so that's something I feel like in my career, kind of like you're saying, like the throwaway. Yeah. It was like have something that you can think about or look at yeah. and that reminds you to just like have a mental trash can and let it all go, which again, so much easier said than done. But true. I think that that's so cool kind of having that discipline and like yeah. that ability to do that. It's something that takes practice, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, and it's never perfect, but it's something that at least like with practice, it kind of becomes a habit mm -hmm. and it becomes a little bit easier. And so I think that that's really great that you even have something yourself where you're like, okay, it's tangible, but it's also mental. Like it's both sure. coming together. Mm -hmm. so I really like that. Mm -hmm. that's awesome. Like Ali said, it does take a lot of dis discipline and it. it is a long process of learning and being more aware of the mindset that you have. So have you seen yourself grow from freshman year to now in that aspect? <laughs> and if so, uh, what ways have you seen growth in yourself? 100%. Uh, I guess 
I guess first of all, like obviously, I've gained about forty pounds since my freshman year. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I mean, more importantly, I've gained so much mental confidence and just mental strength from working with Brian Kane and uh, also just just becoming more of a man. And uh, yeah. we have great coaches who teach us not only. I'm sure the same with y'all, not only great uh, players, but great people. Mm-hmm. And uh, they've taught me lessons that I'm going to take into my probably till I die. Yeah. You know, it's just awesome. And that mental side is really where I've seen growth and, and what's helped me get, have confidence out on the field. Yeah, it is really impactful in how you play. And so for viewers who maybe haven't played sports and been in our shoes or in where they're in a game and feeling those pressures, can you kind of explain the – um, contradicting feelings of when, like, you want, you're locked in, you've done all mm-hmm. the preparation for the game, and you're excited to play, you're ready to play, and then you go into a game and you're just not performing yeah. the way you want to. And you do everything, yeah, you just do everything yeah. you're capable of to get the results that you want, and just things just aren't going that way. Can you kind of dis- explain, I guess, that feeling for people who yeah. may not understand? Yeah, that is the toughest thing in all of sports. Yeah, uh, it's so you feel like you did everything right, but it, you just don't get the results you want. And especially in baseball, it's a, it's a game of failure. And, uh, yeah, it's it's tough. You, you know, a hitter can get out seven out of ten times and he can be an All-American. I don't know how that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it is tough. But as, as I was saying in the beginning, like, can you stay committed to that process without being emotionally attached? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the hardest thing. You know, people will get down on themselves if they just fail one time or if they think they did everything right and fail. You have to stay committed because it, it's going it, to – whatever you put in, you're going to get out. Yeah. And so if you just stay, uh, stay with it, and uh, you're going to get the results you want. It just might take time. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, that's a great answer. To that. That's a really great answer. Yeah. And I also i am kind of curious. So talking about some of the – like pressure areas, and I know we kind of hit on like fans and people who are watching. Do you ever feel like that's something? I know at least for myself, I was always so hyper focused on what people were perceiving me as mm-hmm. when playing, especially when I made a mistake. Yes. I was like, oh my gosh, they're gonna think <laughs> I'm the worst. You know, like this is so bad. So how do you feel like that's something that may have affected you earlier on? Is it something that still affects you, or are there different areas of that that? Yes, it may be easy in the moment or afterwards to try to let it go, but sometimes, like, those things are hard to not kind of focus in on. 100%. I always think about that, even though I try not to. (laughs) Uh, I've gotten better at it as I've gotten more mentally tough, Um, but it's always going to be there. You know, we're human. Yes. And Mm -hmm. it's it's always going to be there, and I think about it. I do think about it a lot. But uh, something that helped me is when you're playing at home, or if you're in front of your own fans, like you're, they're there to support you, mm-hmm. and they're there, like you've worked your whole life for basically that moment. And they're right. there to support you, and if you are away, well, they're there to kind of not to make fun of you, even though it might seem like it. <laughs> <laughs> they're there still because you're a good team. Right. And yes. You've worked for it, and uh, yeah, you're. They should be watching you. They paid to watch you, yeah. so you kind of embrace that and, and have a little chip on your shoulder. Like yeah, mm-hmm. it's the flip of mentality. Yes, yeah. yes. I feel yes. like I've I've experienced that too, just from freshman to my senior year. Is just getting in that mindset, like you mm-hmm. said, like they're here to watch me. Yeah. Like kind of like I'm, gotta I'm get yourself here. a pep yeah. talk. <laughs> like gotta remind that's yourself right. who you are a that's little what bit. It's about. Like, so yeah. that's that's funny that you said mm-hmm. that because I feel like that's that is an aspect of sports in general that sure. you kind of have to grow to learn. Is mm-hmm. like, absolutely managing that yes. and and like recognizing that that's yeah. just it that's just a part of how it is yes. and so it's it's it i don't know it's something you have to is. learn yes yeah. it is what it is so yeah that's awesome so um with that being said we're going to take a little break to hear from our sponsors and when we come back we'll hear more from nathan
Welcome back for our commercial brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. We are going to jump right back in with Nathan. So tell us a little bit about what your Omaha experience was like. We know that you guys went really far this past season. It was really incredible watching you guys, supporting you guys. But tell us about how that experience was like for you specifically. Thank you. Thank you. That experience was amazing and once in a lifetime, maybe hopefully twice in a lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it was so much fun, and it, it really is the greatest show on dirt. That's what they call it. Oh, and, uh, it's, it's really cute. Yeah, I've never heard that yeah. before. It's really cute. It's fun. Uh, yeah, I loved it, and it was an, a really surreal experience. You know, every kid growing up wishes of, of being there and playing, and I got to live that out, and it was so much fun. But uh, uh, first game, I had – a little bit of adversity, not going to lie. <laughs> I, I didn't do too good. Um, only about an inning. Uh, came out giving up seven runs and just did not feel good. Uh, of course, on the biggest stage, I have my worst performance of my career. And uh, I just felt like we were talking about earlier, like I just felt like I had done all the preparation, done everything right, and then you just don't get the results you want. Yeah. And that was so tough. And uh it was it was really terrible, and uh, of course I'm going out out and looking on Twitter and everything and seeing that what people are saying, and uh, it's not very nice things. But uh, luckily, uh, about three days later, I redeemed myself, got the ball again, and went out and had a great game, and we, we beat Notre Dame. And uh, so yeah, it was it was really uh, nice to to pick myself up there and yeah. save my team. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So I have two questions for you. I'm gonna go one by one though, so I don't <laughs> okay. so you don't forget and I don't like load your brain too much, gotcha. but. Like you said, you kind of had a rough start, and then you came back and had a complete turnaround. How did you know that you were going to be able to come back from that first game after not doing so well and having such a short rest time in between mm -hmm. and to, to be able to perform in that second game again? Nothing changed physically between the two starts, but everything changed mentally. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I didn't gain five pounds of muscle and threw five miles an hour harder you know, I was the same person with the same the same stuff, but everything changed in my brain. Mm -hmm. and so I, I told myself, you know, in that first start, I felt like, as we're talking about the uncontrollables, I felt like I was thinking about the fans, what they would say. I was thinking about, oh, I really hope this umpire is good, and he calls balls that are close on the outside corner or something. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about all that instead of just focusing on executing one pitch at a time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when I went into the second game and had success, I, I told myself – I'm going to have fun today, and I'm going to throw strikes. Because mm -hmm. if, if I throw strikes and they hit me all over the yard, I can live with that. But if I'm yeah. walking the house and just not even close, then I can't live with that. Yeah, so right. just that mindset change of just keeping it simple and just having fun and throwing strikes, that's really what, what helped me. Yeah, so I love – that's amazing because now you could just give me another question for you. Like you just said, have fun. And I feel like even in soccer, like when, yes. we're, when we're taking things oh, yeah. too serious and we're just – so focused to where we're not getting those results. Mm -hmm. We just are like, guys, have like remember to yeah. have yeah, fun again. You have, have exactly fun. You have to remember about. how yes. that, how the sport made you feel. Mm -hmm. yes. So is that something that you kind of tell yourself a lot? Oh, like for sure. just go back to having fun and then you kind of yeah. just relax yeah. a little bit. Especially more. now going through that experience, that's that's what it's all about. Yes. yes. And you play like the reason the sport was invented is to have fun as a right. pastime. Like yeah. and we just, it's become a business and we take it so serious now. And it's good to be competitive. Mm -hmm. And that's fun as well, but just having fun with it and, and being with your teammates, and, yeah. and that's that's what it's all about. And mm -hmm. I think that you play your best when you are having fun. Right. Because oh, yeah. when you're putting so much of that pressure on, it be can become miserable right. when you're like, let go and let loose and have a good yeah. time and enjoy the people that you're with and the platform that you've been given to perform on. It's like, whoa, mm -hmm. game changer. Uh -huh. Like You perform so much better, yes. and it's crazy how it's so recognizable, too, within yes. yourself. Mm -hmm. It's like, all I had to do was have fun to play that good, you oh, know? Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. really? Wow. <laughs> Who would have thought? That was it. Um, yeah, but that's really, I think that was a great thing to hit on, because that's yeah. definitely mm -hmm. something within my career that oh, I yeah. had to also recognize was, come on, Ali, when you're, like, sitting out there miserable, you're not doing too well. Yeah. Like, just have a good time, and... It'll all be great. Like, flip the switch. Yeah, go back, flip the switch. Go back to having that, that yes. good time. And then, so, you were also talking about Omaha and the fans, kind of how that affected you. Mm -hmm. So, like, watching the games, y'all had a, a big fan base. Y'all had so many people from Huge. both teams. 12 man. Yes. Yeah. They're They're showing out. So <laughs> they well. Do. Always. Um, and just always filling up the, the seats and mm -hmm. the stands. So, how do you kind of manage that 
um, pressure from the fans because obviously in sports, we want fans there. They mm-hmm. just help build that environment. We could kind of see that like after COVID and stuff, how important they were to that yeah. competitive environment. Um, but also they can have so many opinions sometimes. Yeah. So kind of do you, are you someone that goes to Twitter after a good game, after a bad game? Are you on social? Does it really matter? Are you after, is it every game? Like how do you kind of manage that from the fans? I used to be huge in, into Twitter and text ads and all that and just going on there and, and seeing what they had to say kind of boosted my ego a little bit yeah. when I would do good. But, uh, you know, I would also go down there off bad games and I would just crumble. You know, yeah. it just feels so bad when you, you hear opinions about uh, yourself. And uh, I, I've learned that you should probably stay off there. <laughs> and, uh, it's, it's not a very good place. Um, yeah, there's a lot of opinions on there that might not be true. It, it really only matters what you think. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm sure you all know you, blocking out the outside noise, no matter what's going on within a team, is super important. Yeah. And, uh, you know, who, whoever pats you on the back is also going to stab you in the back at one point. Oh. Um, wow. Yeah, yeah, put that on a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. Yeah, it, it, blocking out the noise. stick with me for life. <laughs> blocking out the noise means you also have to block out the good sometimes. Yeah. That's something I feel like we were – I mean, in a sense, kind of fortunate about is that we are not one. We're a pretty big female sport at a mm-hmm. but we don't have to really deal with the social media areas of things. Like, okay. people on Twitter aren't tweeting like, oh, my gosh, they did so bad today. Oh, my gosh, Allie Russell just had Can't a terrible that, touch. Allie, oh. Yeah, you know, like, no <laughs> yeah. one's doing that. And not on Instagram, Twitter, anything. And yeah. so I feel like that's, in a sense, like, we were fortunate enough that if we did have that, I know myself, and I know I would have been so tempted to go on and look good, bad, anything. Yeah. And so for you, did there ever come a point maybe where you just chose to let it go? Like you didn't want to look good, bad, or do you still – either way, there's no right or wrong. Are you still someone who does like to look at it just so you kind of know what's going on, or have you chosen to block it out a little bit more? I'll I'll look every now and then. I've I've kind of just – gone away from it a little bit but uh, I've gained a whole lot of self-confidence and realized like it doesn't matter what they think it it really only matters what my teammates my family and myself think so yeah yeah (laughs) that's what it's all about absolutely that's so true so kind of like back to um, your Omaha experience so once you kind of got into the mode of things and you kind of got your groove back did you did you feel like a little bit more confident in yourself throughout the duration of your time there oh for sure 100 percent uh, I, I, you know, after my first outing, I felt like the smallest guy in the world and didn't even want to show my face to the fans. Like, I would just sit in the dugout in the back, and you know, I was just all down on myself. But uh, we actually – we had a game the next game the next day I, against Texas, of oh, course. Wow. Uh, oh, yeah. Right after we yeah, lost. Yeah, yeah. My worst <laughs> game, right? I know. I was going to say, yes. Yeah. I completely forgot about yeah. that. But and Then we got, had to go play them. And uh, I, I woke up that morning and uh, still not feeling too good. But I just said, like, I can – feel down on myself and be that guy at the end of the, the dugout and just all pouting and, oh, woe is me, I I'm, I'm, uh, feel bad for myself. But, or I can just go and be the best cheerleader that I can be mm-hmm. for my teammates that are having to go play this crazy game against a r- huge rival. Yeah. And uh, so I decided to do that, and I thought that was the best thing. And I just cheered him on the whole time. I was the guy holding up the Pringles. Yeah. I was the yeah. Yes, <laughs> the, the <Pringles>. huge. <laughs> yeah, the huge <laughs> can. I was banging on it all game, just cheering That's on my guys. And yeah. it, it, I really realized, like, you know, that, that one game, I can't let it just control me. Yeah. It, it's in the past. You can't control the past. That's where, you know, depression lies. And, yeah. and the future is where anxiety lies. And But when you're in the present, that's a gift. Yeah, yeah. right. So that's wow. That was great. You were yeah. excited. I know. <laughs> I'm like, okay, <laughs> got to remember that one too. I know. Write it down. Yes. And I feel like that's like, that's great that you said that because I feel like that that, that was a choice that you made. Mm-hmm. Like you said, I could have easily, you could have easily been moping and just down yeah. on yourself the whole time, but you chose to be there for your team yeah. and you chose to kind of show up in a different role maybe and still support your teammates. Yeah. And I think that's, like, I just wanted to make that clear. And it's not that we're saying when dealing with these pressures that you just kind of have to drop all your emotions and, and push your feelings yeah. to the side and kind of just, like, forget. But it's kind of like you kind of have to give yourself, a, at least for me, I kind of give myself a time a time time frame. Excuse me, yeah. I can't talk. Mm-hmm. A time frame of, like, reflecting. And, okay, yeah. if it's that we're night, okay, that. at this time, I got to let it go and on to the next yeah. because I got to prepare for the next yeah. thing. Is yeah. that kind of something that you do with yourself? For and sure. So, yeah. like, 
I don't know how to explain it. No, but yeah. Is that something I, you do? I don't yes, know. I also think it's, we've kind of talked about too, like embracing the role that you're in mm-hmm. and whether that's a role that seems so exciting in the moment and you're starting every game yeah. or you're playing every minute or it's a role where you are a cheerleader on the sideline. Yeah. If you don't embrace the role that you're in, then it's going to be miserable. Mm-hmm. You're going to feel those emotions and those like like you're saying, you just put yourself in a state of depression, yeah. a state of being sad and upset, and you're moping about whatever's going on. Mm. But just simply embracing whatever position you're in, whatever role you're given, it's a game changer. Because I also think that allows you a change in perspective as well. I mean, there's every, like you're saying, everything's an uncontrollable. And so when you're trying to focus in on the uncontrollables and change the situation, nothing's going to change. Yeah. You know, and so I really do. I I like that, too. And it's something that we've talked about, just really like embracing whatever role you're in. Something we've talked about from the beginning, like Mm -hmm. our first episode, we were even talking about that. Um, But I did have a question. And of course, now I'm forgetting it as I go on that (laughs) tangent. But oh, yes. okay, I remembered it. So we've been talking about like the pressures and things. And Mm -hmm. before this episode, we were getting a little bit of an insight on some of the change of pace when it comes to your time clock now. Yes. So 20 seconds, mm-hmm. you have to pitch. Yes. And then you have to do it all again in 20 seconds, where you used to have all the time in the world, yep. so you could take your time. So has that been a change for you when it comes to pressure and feeling like the time crunch is there? It, it has been, but luckily we've had about a, you know, that whole last semester to practice it. Okay. Uh, in the beginning, it felt foreign. It felt weird trying to speed yourself up. Yeah. Um, obviously, in sports, you're trying to slow yourself down, yeah. slow your body yes. down. And uh, just so your heart rate's not pounding out your chest. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it was definitely a change. But I think it's a change for the better for the game. Uh, it speeds everything up. It keeps the action going. And uh, for me, when I'm rolling good and keeping that tempo up, it seems like I'm just, you know, yeah. suffocating the strike zone. And, like, the hitters are like, what's going on? <laughs> and so little short of time. Yeah. And so I, I actually like it. And uh, I've gotten used to it. And I definitely think it, it's good for yeah, the game. And it's right. helping. Yeah. yeah. So is that maybe – has that been – like you're saying, it's not only for you it's a time crunch, but also for the person at bat. Yes. So do you feel like that's to your advantage in a sense? Because they're kind of like on your, they're on your time. Mm-hmm. I, I definitely think it's to your advantage. It depends on how you use it. A lot yeah. of guys I've seen so far this season, like they've, they're still taking all the time in the world to pitch and they're throwing it with one or two seconds left. And uh, then that means the hitter has all the time in the mm-hmm. world, you know. Mm-hmm. So when you're – getting up on the mound as quick as you can, in control of yourself, yeah. and just th- throwing strikes and filling up the zone, that hitter feels it. And yeah. he, he's stepping into the box and, like, looking at the ground, and you're already going through your motion. He's like, oh, shoot. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> yeah so it definitely it, it depends how you use it because yeah. they have to deal with it too. Right, yeah. kind of like a game by game. Thing. Yeah. yeah, game within a game. Yeah, yeah. and game knowing, a game. knowing your competition too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Scouting. Scouting. For sure. Yes, research. Yes. Um, yes. Tell us also a little bit about what it's been like for maybe you individually, but you also your team collectively coming off of a really successful run in Omaha, now going into the season. What maybe are just some of the things that you guys have talked about, some of the motivators, maybe some of those pressures, like how are you guys feeling going into this season with being so successful last season? Yeah, it's I've never been on part of a team that was preseason ranked or anything, so this is definitely different. And uh, uh, people like to say that there's a whole lot of expectations, but uh, we don't like to say that just because it, it doesn't matter what other people think. It doesn't matter what the number next to your team name is, what, mm-hmm. what you're ranked. It just matters how you play. Mm-hmm. It's not who you play, it's how you play. Yeah. So th- as long as we stay together and block out the noise, as we were yes. talking about, mm-hmm. and just stay as a team, and uh, we're going to be all right. Yeah. I mean, we're going through some struggles right now, but okay. we're, we just got to keep trusting the it process. Happens, right. it's yeah, gonna, the it's same thing. It happened to us. We made it to the Elite Eight. Mm-hmm. back in COVID season and had a really great successful run, went to North Carolina, we were killing it, came back, and then we had our next season, yeah. which that went all the way through the spring. So we had our next season in the fall, and it was a quick turnaround, but that next season hit us like a train. Yeah. And I think that it was probably due to allowing like those expectations and pressures to seep in, yeah. not only as individuals but also into the team. Mm-hmm. And it can completely change the dynamic, and mm-hmm. it changes the way you For perform sure. and how you guys are feeling. And so I think that's really great that you're having that mentality. Mm-hmm. No expectations. Like, let's just yeah. go play. Let's have fun. Yep. Let's just do it again. That's right. You know? And so I really like that. I was curious because I feel yeah. like every team, you know, it's has different. their own. Yes, it's different. They approach things different. Yeah, well. and especially with – 
y'all season even going to Omaha can be very lengthy. Oh, so yeah. it's something that you guys have to remind yourself of consistently. I know. I forget that it, it was like it goes till to June. Yeah, June. Because soccer ends in yes. spring. That's and crazy. so June, like we're kind of doing our I own things. Yes. In the summer, like I think I was working an internship and yeah. we had the game up. Um, awesome. <laughs> like at work, but we did too. Yeah, we did too. Yes. <laughs> watching a awesome. little yes. party. So I just had one more question mm-hmm. for you. Is I feel like people kind of associate nervousness with yes. youthness. So mm-hmm. kind of now that you have some experience under your belt, do you still experience nerves before going into a game, like even regular season, whether it's in Omaha? Like, do those nerves still kind of get to you? I definitely feel nervous before I pitch. Uh, I mean, if you're if you're not nervous, I think you don't care. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I've heard that too. Yeah. If you're not nervous, it's not important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's not like important to you, hundred uh, percent. I definitely still get nervous, but you know, everyone gets butterflies. But the goal is to get the butterflies flying in the right direction. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Another one <laughs> Here we go. again. I feel like I have a list of these quotes. I get, Just I get them all from my coaches, man. That's not me. That's my <laughs> coaches. That is so <laughs> I'm like, okay. Coach. I feel like I need to be typing yeah. right now. Like, literally, literally. you have your certification. All the credit to Coach Schloss. <laughs> yeah, he is. Coach he is now he's a mental coach. coach. Yeah. He's our coach. Um, yeah, but that 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 really is the goal, and you know, everyone gets them. But uh, if, as we're saying, like the routine is what brings you back. And we talk a lot about not, you don't step up in, in a big, important moment. You sink down to your level of training. Mm-hmm. So you just, by building those habits throughout the year, yeah. practice makes permanent. Yeah. Uh-huh. There I we like go. That. <laughs> by doing, building those habits by just practice repeatability over and over again, uh, that definitely calms the nerves. And, uh, you know, you just remember, like, I've, I've, I'm prepared for this. I've worked too hard not right. to be confident, you know, yeah. and I'm just going to, yeah, I might be nervous, but once you go out there, you realize I've played this game since I was six years old, you right. know, yes. it's the same game. Like, I know it's and I'm real. just going to go have fun and trust my routine yeah. and all those habits that I built up. Right. I love that. Me That's too. awesome. So before we close is what goals do you have for the future season for yourself? Is there anything in particular? Um, uh, he, uh, you know, I guess this year's a big year for me. It's my draft year. Um, Obviously, I want to wow. be first rounder. Um, hopefully, that's, so that's exciting. That's what, what I'm looking for. But I, I think what's that's important crazy. is to stay present. Yeah. And, you know, huge year. I can think about the draft, and I don't even know when it is, July. But uh, and I can think about the College World Series. But uh, all I can, all I can work on or do and f- change is the present moment right, right now. now. Yeah. And take it day by day. Yes, absolutely. And just let them compound. Good day on top of good day. I think that's really my goal yeah. and what's yeah. important. That's a great yes. goal to have. I, that's so exciting. I know, Congratulations. I'm that's for you. crazy. I like, know. Like, he said that and I just started smiling. Yeah. I know. <laughs> so like, big. Wow, cheesing. <laughs> um, that's really great. And I do feel like it's so important you going out and working every day and working mm-hmm. your butt off and mm-hmm. putting everything that you've talked about as a priority is going to set you up for the future. Right. So it's not hyper focusing in on the future and you're focused on the present, but it is going to set you up for so much, su- so much success. Sure. Tongue twister. Um, when that does come. So that's so exciting. Right. Congratulations. That that's crazy. I love that. So I'm going to be cheering yeah. you on. I'm like, what? And I'm going to be looking. Yeah. <laughs> we'll watch just for you now. Thank you. Um, so if there's nothing else that you, or is there anything else that you want the audience to know about you or any, or baseball or? I don't know. Um, if not, uh, it's okay. I guess yeah. just like we were saying, you know, uh, our team is going through some struggles right now. And I'm sure – I haven't been looking, but I'm sure there's some s- things being said on, <laughs> on social media. But uh, we, we're just going to trust the process and block out the noise, and we're just going to keep doing us. Yes. Amazing. Well, I know 12th Man has all the faith in you guys, oh, yeah. and yeah. we're always behind you guys supporting you all. So Thank you. definitely know it's going to only go up from here. Um, and so last thing, we always ask our guests this question. So if you could put your experience this far into a little cheesy tagline, <laughs> what would it be? I would, ha- I would have to say, do or do not, there is no try. Uh, Yoda said that <laughs> in, uh, in Star Brought Wars. To you by Yoda. In Star Wars, he said that. Um, I guess the reason why is just my whole life, I feel like I've faced a lot of adversity. Um, I came from a divorced family. Uh, you know, growing up in high school, I was always the underdog. Uh, I almost lost my scholarship here, actually. That's another story. But, uh, yeah, I've just faced adversity my whole life, you know, going through the SEC. And, uh, you know, there's wishers, uh, there's doers and dreamers in this world. And you can either dream about it, about a goal, or you can just go ahead and do it. There's no trying. 
You just go ahead and do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love, love it. I love that. Yeah. Another I great piece of advice. I know. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> Write them down. Right? Yeah. No, I have a mental <laughs> list note. going yeah. on. That's awesome. Mental note. Yeah. Um, but thank you again, Nathan, thank for you coming so much. on with us and sharing your story behind the number 35. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're just so glad that you were able to come with us today. And we will definitely be watching you now for the rest of the season yeah. and on TV and just cheering you on. So you have two new, two new fans on awesome. your yeah. side. <laughs> thank you all so much for having me. Yeah. So much Thanks. fun. It's you. been fun. I loved it. Yes, thank, thank you. you. So this is another episode of Behind the Number brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Just want to give them another big thank you for hosting us today. And with that being said, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>